Are you ready? Yes. All right. We have been in a series that is going to last us for 12 months. Uh, where we are participating in the Hero Challenge. We are recognizing that every area of our life is important. And sometimes when we think about our spiritual life, we tend to compartmentalize it and miss out on the fact that God cares about every detail of every part of our life, whether it's recreational, emotional, financial, and the aspects that we term spiritual, but it's more of a plate of spaghetti that interconnects, and we want to be recognizing that we've got this one life to live, and we don't want to out of a sense of obligation or guilt or have to. We want to connect with the get to and not the got to, so that we can begin to experience God's best, God's fullest in every area of our life as we respond to him. Now last week, we asked, or I asked a question, and it was a question that went like this, am I taking responsibility for my life? And then the last part was very important how we phrased that, but really. Am I taking responsibility for my life Really, and we discovered a few things last week. Number one, we discovered that um, you were created to be responsible. That responsibility took place before we saw sin enter the world, before we saw the Ten Commandments. God gave humanity massive responsibility. And we looked in Genesis, and we saw that as Christ followers, that we are to be people who are responsible, that we were designed for it. In fact, we, we see that the result of that is because we live in a connected families, community, civilization, all of it is, is connected some way, and God gave us responsibility, and it affects how we view and see ourselves. And in fact, I, number two is that we're happiest when we have responsibility, and when we're managing it well. And when we're not managing it well, or we're not taking the responsibility that we've been given, we start to feel um, not so good about ourselves. And so we want to connect, and last but not least, we said that in any community, corporation, family, any civilization, state, country, where there is a community of any size, when people begin to take responsibility, there aren't many rules needed. And in fact, in the garden, when Adam and Eve were there, there was only one, one rule, uh, and, and the rest you know, was their ability to take responsibility. And, uh, and we said that this is our very design. And then last but not least is the big sort of aha moment for us was the fact that our irresponsibility becomes someone else's responsibility. So when we aren't recognizing and taking uh, our, our responsibility in life, eventually it is going to affect someone. We're not lone rangers. We're not islands unto ourselves. And so if it's a family situation, a community situation, whatever it is, that eventually people end up getting affected by our irresponsibility. And I said, when you act irresponsible, that somewhere you're asking someone else to clean up your mess. And most people who sent me an email who kind of enjoyed the, uh, I don't know, the illustration I talked about when I tell my kids to clean up their, if I see their towel on the ground and I call them in and say, hey, hey Tyler, I want you to do me a favor. Would you go ahead and, would you go ahead and ask me to pick up your towel? Could you do that for me? And so, you know, so he comes in and, no, Dad, I'm not going to do that. But uh, some of you said you used that on the job, maybe when you were at the gym or something like that. You're like, hey, I saw that you were using this machine. Um, just go ahead and ask me to take the weights off and put them away for you. And so I don't know if you got in any arguments or fights. I hope you didn't, but I, I realized that, uh, that that's important. Well, today I want to... Uh, I want to begin our discussion with uh, refreshing our high school physics, and, um, and then we're going to move into uh, talking about a principle that I think is so important, so big, and so I hope you, you brought something to write with and take some notes, because this is, this is uh, one that just, I mean, strikes to the very core of what, we're, what we talked about last week, and then kind of bringing it home and understanding. And so today we're going to refresh ourselves and we're going to look at a principle that was discovered by Archimedes. And many of you have no idea or can recall who he was. But Archimedes created, or I should say, excuse me, he discovered a principle that uh, uh, would, would help us to understand why battleships float and why rocks sink. 
And so essentially, he found a mathematic equation or a formula for some of those who have maybe some experience in engineering or other things where you do this. But Archimedes discovered the relationship between buoyancy and gravity. As I said before, the reason why uh, rocks sink and battleships float. And it was a law of physics stating that the upward buoyant force, let me read it because I'm not going to remember it, exerted on a body immersed in a fluid is equal to the weight of the fluid the body displaces. Let's pray. Amen. You can go home. Just kidding. So you probably haven't thought a whole lot about this over the last uh, several years of your life, but it's still, it's a still a true principle. In fact, it is, kind of gives the explanation of, of how this displacement and gravity affects us. And, and even though you haven't thought about it in a long time, Archimedes wasn't the one who created or invented it. He was the one who basically discovered it. And he was the one who was able to help others to take the principle and to leverage it and to use it to build massive structures and ships and battleships and things that could be utilized to function in a great way. Are you with me so far? Now, I mean, most people probably wouldn't respond and, and they understand this, that you know, God wasn't up in heaven sort of going to, to you know, ships or, or rocks or whatever and, and sort of indiscriminately going sink, float, sink, float. And so nobody really would, would I'm sure at some point maybe they did, but once this was discovered, people understood that there was a principle that needed to be utilized in order to be able to experience, you know, the benefits or the rewards of it. You with me so far? Yeah. Now, God gives us these things, and, and many uh, theists would realize that principles are given to us as gifts. They're gifts that we can utilize and leverage, and they're always taking place in the periphery, whether we, whether we know it or not, they, they are at play, just like Archimedes' principle. And this morning, I want to talk about another principle that operates in our periphery. It functions in some manner, the, just the exact same way as that one, and we're going we're gonna to dive in to look at how we can leverage it, how we can uh, recognize and, and to extrapolate, to get the most so that we can experience God's absolute best. And here is the principle. People reap what they sow, all right? King James Version says it much more eloquently. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reapeth. It just says reap. It doesn't say reapeth. I just said that. But whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now, if you've been in church for a long time and your, your sort of uh, filter is bent on um, religious God and a personality that is out to get you, I fear that you may miss really where we're going to take this and be able to truly dig our teeth or bite into it and really wrap our hands around it. Uh, because what we here at E3 Church like to do, we always like to approach the Word of God from a vision. Rather than fear, because of relationship, we want to respond to the word from a place, a vision. Because remember, when there is no vision, people perish. But when there is a vision, people thrive. People thrive. So we've got to take a hold of this principle with vision. And we also have to remember that God is always leading us to the best possible life. And as followers of Jesus, we desire to, to allow others to look at people who follow Jesus and say, hey, those guys are like, they're going after the best possible life. Right now, probably people don't say that about people who follow Jesus. Would that be true? They, they have other things to say about people who follow Jesus. But as we look at Jesus, when he showed up, he came to show us the best possible way to live. And in the principles that we see, we're going to understand that it indeed leads us that way. Now, uh, the, one of the reasons why irresponsibility become, becomes someone else's burden is indeed because of this principle, something that catches up with us. I mean, this principle isn't necessarily good or bad. It just is. Now, you can leverage it for good things, or you can ignore it, and there'll be consequences, just like Archimedes' principle. 
If you just ignore it and you sort of just go on, you know, the, the possibility of, of you sinking or floating, it might happen, it might not, because you're not necessarily seeing the principle and, and extracting it. This, this principle also helps us understand why God isn't angry or against you because he's given us a gift. He's given us a principle that we can leverage. And again, if we ignore it, there's consequences. But there isn't God in heaven going, punish, bless, punish, 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 bless. Even though you've maybe felt that way a time or two. But in reality, God's given us a gift that operates that maybe will help us to understand a little bit how things function and how we can begin to leverage it. Are you with me so far? Now, we're going to start off in, in Galatians 6. And uh, for those of you who don't have any background there, the Galatians is a letter that's uh, written to the people who lived in Galatia 3,500 years after Jesus had left the earth. Now, there's churches that are starting to pop up all over Asia Minor. And so Paul is, is basically writing a letter, and, and it's important where we're going to read. He's writing a letter contrasting um, our responsibility to help other people against the tendency of people to, uh, to allow themselves to be helped just because they, they don't want to take responsibility for their lives. That makes sense? So he's contrasting here in this passages of Scripture. So I'm responsible to help people in need, but I'm also responsible for me. And, and we can't just begin to, as Paul writes here, that we can't just take our Christian values, right, and, and we should love one another but irre, be irresponsible to ourselves. And, and he, he realizes that we can't just count on good Christians to sort of take care of us or, or to sort of, uh, you know, the slack that we've sort of gone in our irresponsibility to, to take up or make up for. Let's look in Galatians 6, verse 3. If any of you think you're something when you're nothing, you deceive yourselves. Each of you should test your own actions. Now he starts, and if we look before here, Paul begins to discuss something that happens when you and I begin to compare ourselves to others. Now I know none of you probably do this ever, right? You never look at you know, maybe that you're far advanced than some people and feel good about yourself or look at others who are further advanced and you start to, to, to make excuses. I'm sure this hasn't happened to you. Maybe when you see that someone else has something, you maybe start to um, make up, maybe they just had more advantages. Maybe they were just more well-educated and, and you start to just sort of drift off into an area of irresponsibility by saying and comparing yourself. And Paul says, don't do that. Don't deceive yourself. If you begin to compare yourself to others, you, you will begin to walk in deception. And, and as you do it and you create this, you'll, you'll start to lose responsibility for your life, for what God's given you, because you'll start to drift off into other areas, and you'll honestly start to do yourself a disservice, because you'll feel like, hey, man, everybody else just has all these advantages, and so you'll quit take, taking responsibility for what you've been given. And so he says, test your own actions. If you want to be able to live and experience the best possible life, you have to evaluate yourself. You have to evaluate yourself, not the people around you. In other words, stop looking out the window, start looking in the mirror. And we said one of the things that we all think about with irresponsibility is that we are all responsible. When it comes to responsibility, we think we're responsible because irresponsibility is not something that we can just see in the mirror. But Paul tells us that we have to test our own actions. We can't look at everybody else and say, oh, okay, the reason why they're there is because they got an inheritance or they did that or they had all these advantages, thereby deceiving yourself and putting yourself in a pretty bad position. But what you can do is you can begin to test your own actions. And then he, then he goes on to say, then you can take pride in yourself, not a bad pride, a good one, take pride in yourself without comparing yourself to somebody else. Verse five, for each of you should carry 
your own load. Take responsibility for your own load, that your life and what you've been given is what you're to be responsible. Now, if you take your eyes off of that, you'll begin to start to look to others and you'll stop making progress. Anybody ever experienced that before? No? You, you've taken your eyes off of yourself and the gifts that you've been given and you, you've cried a tear in your beer because everybody else is sort of ahead of you or further along or look at me, look at where I'm at and all of a sudden you, you're not making progress anymore. In, in, in fact, you get into a place of depression. Now, he says, if you bear down and you begin to focus in on managing and taking care of your load, then you're going to be a person who starts to progress. And then he goes on, I'm going to skip over verse 6 for a second and go just straight to verse 7. He says, do not be deceived. God can't be mocked. And he lays the bomb on us. People reap what they sow. So, He's sort of dealing with an element of, of what's crept into the church at that point. And I think it's easy. And, uh, you know, I know for myself as a person who's discovered the goodness of God and discovered God's love, he, he's telling these people, don't be deceived. God can't, can't be mocked. In other words, it isn't about magic prayers and magic formulas, you know, Things where we're like, you know, I mean, I'm sure you grew up in, at a time or, or in around a group of people who went to a specific little place or a box, and they would come and they would offer up, maybe, and not necessarily I'm judging anyone's heart, but in a sense, because we've all done this at some point, we come with our sort of bucket of mistakes, and we say a magic prayer, and then it's all gone, and we sort of feel, feel like, oh, awesome, this sounds like a great game to play. I'll just... I'll just do a bunch of stuff and then I'll say a magic prayer and, you know, it'll all be great. Now, it, it isn't the fact and the reality that God offers us total forgiveness and his love is amazing, but he's saying don't, don't get into a silly little game. Don't, don't be immature because God can't be mocked. Homie knows what's going on in your heart, right? He knows what's happening in your life. If you're sitting around kind of just sort of pacifying, like I'm just going to do it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to snap my WWJD JD bracelet and everything's going to be cool. No, no, no. God knows you. He knows your heart. So if you want to make progress, don't just act like a fool because God can't be fooled. Um, he's not gullible. And you can't just misuse scripture and just sort of, do whatever you want and manufacture a religious system, there's a principle at play, and he says, people reap what they sow. The life is connected. There's a relationship between your current irresponsibility, your unwillingness to take responsibility for your life. Really, there's a, co a connection between that and what you and I can expect in the days, the weeks, and the months ahead. Now, right, I mean, this is not necessarily a shame or guilt type of thing. This is a scripture and a principle for you and I to leverage. God says people reap what they sow. Now, you can immediately, you know, take that as something bad, or you can immediately take that as a principle that is powerful, right? So, each one of us, look at your and say, everyone reaps what they sow. Now, the corollary to this principle of sowing and reaping is a concept of later and greater. You reap later and you reap greater. It's part of it, right? Later is why you and I can't, can't just give up on doing the things that, that we know. We can't can't just keep following after the responsibility and the gifts that we've been given. We can't just give up on that because the corollary to the principle is that at a certain point, later and greater is going to come. Later is going to take place. And so a lot of times we sort of drift off and we see irresponsible, excuse me, irresponsible people sort of just living it up and enjoying the good life. But 
you know, like nothing is sort of happening to them. And so we ask ourselves, why am I being so diligent? I mean, they're over there just sort of doing everything that we want, everything that they want. Why am I, I mean, taking my family so seriously? Why? Well, everyone else decides to work 75 hours a day and, and you know, and, and I'm making a decision so that I could grow my family and be responsible for what God's given me. Why am I cutting out early? so that I can invest in my children, the things that you and I are responsible for. Why am I doing that while they seem to be getting and reaping all the rewards? Well, the concept of later and greater. Your kids will grow up and they will have the security and the experience of a relationship with you and that comes later. Can any parents give witness to that? That happens. Now, I know for me, I've seen this happen over the last several years of being a, a, a pastor who, who's bivocational and who works. I've watched this in the good and in the bad. I've had moments and seasons where I've dedicated myself just, just in the responsibility of my job. I've given it more and, and, and I've let the responsibility of being a father and a husband, I've sort of let it wane for periods and months and I've suffered the consequences <laughs> where my kids, you know, are a little bit wilder and crazier, but then when I've taken the responsibility to be there and to cut off work at the appropriate time so that I could be home to be with my kids because they're my responsibility and I've sowed seeds into their hearts and their lives, I've also experienced the fruit of that responsibility. And so that concept, and it's like I said, it's neither good nor bad, it just is. But it helps us to recognize, some of us, we've been looking out the window for a long time at where other people are, and we've wondered, how come, you know, how come I am not experiencing what they are? So then we say, well, it must be because they've been afforded these advantages, and I've got all this, shh, don't look out the window, look in the mirror. What is what are the things that you've been given? How can you take this gift that God's given to you and how can you begin to leverage it? Let's say leverage. How do you leverage it so that you can experience progress? First you know, thing that has to happen is we have to take account of what we're responsible for. What has God given us responsibility over? I mean, God's given us responsibility to orphans and widows. Those are part of our responsibility. And if we don't take our responsibility, what did we say? Someone else will have to, somewhere else will have to do it. I mean, if I don't take responsibility, I have a piece of trash and I throw it on the ground, at some point, someone else is going to have to be hired to come along and to pick up that piece of trash. And thereby, I am subjugating, I don't know if that's the right word or not, but I'm just going to go with it. The very essence of the community in which I live because everything is connected. And so if I don't, right, if I don't care for and invest and sow seeds in my relationship with my wife, someone somewhere else might. My responsibility is to that relationship. Your responsibility is to those relationships, to your friendships, to what God's given you. Can I get an amen? amen. Now, once again, let's get a vision for leveraging that. So if I sow seed into the community, into the family, into the gift that I've been given, into the area that God's placed me, if I stop looking to, to overhear someday or something else and start imagining this dream of what will be over there because someone else we see is experiencing it, we're being irresponsible. But responsibility is to take where you are right now with what you've been given, with the people who surround you, in your church, in your company that you work for, in your relationship, in your gifts. A lot of times what we experience, I mean, if you're going to have to think about it, if we look at a piece of pie, and, and this is the concept of greater, some of us have, have been experiencing maybe some pain in, or in areas of our lives, and we're like, I didn't deserve all this, right? Anybody raise your hand and say, yeah. 
Yeah, I got jacked. Just go ahead, lift your hand up. Thank you. Just be like, yeah, I got jacked. I, I do. I mean, I, mean I, I can tell you there, there has been things that I'm like, I didn't deserve all that is, this is happening. And that's okay. For just a second, take a step back. And I, I want you to look. I understand the whole pie where you're like, I did not. I did not sow this, and I am reaping this. What is going on? Well, before you get too irresponsible with yourself there, let's step back, and we're just going to look at a sliver. I don't know what portion of you know, the, the situation or the circumstance that stance that's going on. Are you with me? Yes. I mean, maybe your slice of the pie isn't that big. Maybe it's smaller, but I want you to just step back, and I want you to look and, and, and just be responsible for the area that you can be responsible for. So if you've had a relationship, this will be easier. If you had a relationship that went wrong and you say to yourself, I didn't deserve all this. Okay, I, I understand that. But the concept and the corollary is later and greater. So it's always greater than you can imagine. But what can you say? Maybe I worked a few extra hours, and maybe I could have, I could have invested myself, whatever, whatever area, think back on where you can see and begin to be responsible, and, and not excuse it, are you with me? Yes. I know I'm stringing along, but where can you carry your own load? Why? Because the principle will transform and change your life when you take responsibility for yourself. So, how does this relate? It, it relates to everything. It relates to the gifts that you've been given and why in a church are, are, are sometimes uh, we, we can take for granted serving in the smallest capacity. But the, but the reality is, is that when we begin to utilize our gifts, serving a community, it doesn't even have to be a position, you know, serving in a church, but it's a good description and example because we come together and we all bring our crackers and God multiplies it. It gives us a good example of how when we do this, things can function on a greater level. Now, I, I know the reverse I said could be true. I mean, how many of you, if somebody broke into your home tonight and, and basically they came in, they broke into your house and essentially, they, they stole something from you, and, and then they, they left, and Officer Paul Wright, he was out on patrol, and he caught them. And the whole thing took 30 minutes, front to end, 30 minutes. How many of you, if, if they went to the judge, and the judge said, all right, Mr. Schmuckety Schmuck, you know, for your 30 minutes that you stole from this house, I'm sentencing you to 30 minutes in jail. How many of you would be all right with that? All right, how about we double it? All right, Mr. Schmuckety Schmuck, I'm sentencing you to one hour, one hour in jail for your actions. We'd be outraged, right? How about one day, one whole day for 30 minutes, right? Because the principle operates later and greater. It's not good or bad, it just is. And so it happens on the other side. And it's why some of us have been frustrated for a long time, but the truth and reality is, is that if we want to begin to experience the very best and see progress in our lives and begin to experience the destiny and plan and purpose that God has for us, it's rooted in taking responsibility. It's rooted in us going back, and it's easy maybe in finances, we can, we can look back and go, all right, was I maybe a little bit excited with that credit card? Was I, was I a little bit maybe on those shopping websites, maybe just a little bit too long? And, and basically, sometimes we can see our irresponsibility where we have basically sowed seeds and, seeds, and now the current predicament that we're in has led us to the current situation that is sort of lording over us. Now, we have a chance and an opportunity to look at that and go back and assess ourselves and then we can begin to make a decision to do the things that we should have been doing from the beginning in every area for our relationships so uh for our physical life which is what we're we're looking at because we've got one life to live we want to live it to the utmost to experience the fullness of what god has for us and so 
I can look at my current physical situation and make excuses. I just don't have the same genetics as this person. I just don't have, you know, I, don't, I just don't have the ability and the time. I mean, could, do you think we could come up with some excuses? I know I can. I'm just really tired. I mean, this pillow is super soft, and like, I think my responsibility is to minister to this pillow, right? <laughs> I have a responsibility, but all of us, if we look back, where we are currently is the result of the seeds we have sown or haven't sown. I know we don't like it, but it just is, right? Battleships float, rocks sink. Where you are is a result of what you sowed. But the good news is that you and I can transform that by simply leveraging the principle immediately, right? So we can begin to experience God's fullness in every area of our life. So what tends to happen here is that probably if you're, 45 plus, you might be thinking, you know, I wish I would have heard this when I was 25. And then for the most part, at 25 years old, we're thinking, you know, that we have habits already. And if we decide that we want to see transformation in our life, we, we either decide to adjust those or, or we can act like sometimes I probably did. You probably don't. But like, I'm all right. I'm good. I got it. I don't, I don't, I don't thanks for the help, but I'm cool. I'm going to keep I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And that's okay. But the reality is that we have a chance to own it. And if we own it and we're truthful with where we currently are, whether it was relationships, finances, health, every part of our life is affected. And this principle can be put into play. And if we'll take action, owning, there is a freedom that comes when we own it. If you have been a looky-loo out the window, I mean, I would say all of us have. We have depressed ourselves and, and we have medicated ourselves by looking at other people and seeing where they are ahead of us or, uh, or behind us feeling good, beating our chest. That, that nonsense will deceive you, right? Yeah. Anybody deceived yourself by doing that? And, and spent time going, look at them. They have their own record label. They have this and that and the other. That's none of your business. What is your business is you. Well, look at this person. See, I, I mean, they, they messed me over, you know, I mean, or, or maybe, you know, you, you could look at past boyfriends and girlfriends and be like, check out where I'm at. I'm awesome. Or maybe they're now, you know, they have their own reality television show and you go, oh, you know, maybe they're doing well. I don't know. Whatever it is. Has that, has that really blessed anybody? I mean, has that really? No. It leads you to self-deception. And so where, where God is taking us is in the opportunity to seize our responsibility, to seize it in every area so that we from this moment could own it. We could stop blaming it and we could take on our load and we could leverage it and begin to do what we have been doing, all, what we should have been doing all along. Because scripture promises us that in due season, we will reap a reward. And guess what? That reward is always greater than we could ever imagine. Now, as I reflected back on this, and I began to sort of think about my own life, I, I really recognize this principle is true. I mean, I was able to to sort of look down at, at, at times when, when, when I sowed seeds in areas of my life in ministry and, and I've sowed seeds in the negative side of wild times. And in both areas, it proved true. <laughs> it, it proved to later and greater. And, and the exciting thing about that is that that principle will go to work for you immediately. That right now, if you are a person who says, I don't have any friends. I don't have any friends. Nobody really cares about me. Nobody calls me up. And if you own this, you can look back and see, do you do that? Is maybe the reason why nobody's hanging around because you're a person who needs to be a little bit more fun and exciting. And the seeds that you've sown are total lameness. 
I'm, I'm really just talking to myself, not you. But if you own it, you can become more fun. Can I get a, oh yeah, on that. You can just hang around us here at E3. We're a lot of fun. And, and you can, right now where you are, you've probably heard the phrase, bloom where you're planted, but that's God's desire for you. Quit living over here and living over there. The gifts that are inside of you, guess what? They'll reap a reward, but recognize the principle that needs to take place. It's why you've got to invest yourself. You see our band. I mean, our band is, is I mean, we got a ton of talented people up here, and I'm excited to see what God is going to do and utilize them because I've challenged them. I want, the only reason I want people to come to this church is to listen to them because they rock, right? I mean, I'm just saying that because that's, that's the challenge I've put in front of them. I want it, it to be such a thing. And, and they, they invest themselves, and as a result, things get better. I mean, it's music to your ears, literally. I mean, on that principle, if they come each week, and it's not fun. We, Thursday nights, it's not always fun to come and take the time. But if we, if we sacrifice and we sow the seed, we get better. I'm a living testament. My guitar playing. If you saw it before, you would realize it's gotten better. Yeah. So, whatever is in your heart, start sowing the seed. It's not your responsibility to multiply it, to grow it. That's God's. But I guarantee you 100%, as you do that, God can't be mocked. That principle goes to work immediately, and the repercussions will be amazing. So, what I want to challenge us to do is, is A, to own it in our own lives, B, is to look where we can take responsibility. What, what truly are the gifts that you've been given? What, what do you have? You know, it's easy for me to say, okay, well, do you have a musical gift? Where are, you, where are you sowing that seed so that you can reap a harvest and a reward? And that doesn't mean that you're going to be Jimi Hendrix or somebody else. It might mean that you're gonna, your gift is going to minister. It's going to be a blessing to somebody you, you have a heart to love on people. You have a, a special gift, whatever it is. You know, use that so that it can become multiplied because you have no idea. That's why we got to get our seed in the ground. It can't reap a reward or a harvest unless you get it in the ground. And it's true. In your marriages, if you are a person who is not sowing seeds of love and encouragement to your spouse, you will reap. And that will not be a reward. But if you do, if you sow seeds, it will reap a harvest. So let's get busy. Let us sow some seeds into relationships and friendships. Let's utilize our gifts for, for prayer within our community, to sow the seeds for others, to stir our hearts. Let's get off our blessed assurance and get out and, and take the heart that God's given us, right? Romans 5, 5, you shed the love of God and broaden our hearts by the Holy Spirit because there's a principle that needs to get into play. And if we just sit back and wait, then the next generation will have to clean up our mess because we decided to be irresponsible with what God give, gave us. You're complete in Christ Jesus. The love of God has been shed abroad in your hearts, not to mention you're handsome and good looking. <laughs> just say that right now. <laughs> I am good looking. Bow your head and close your eyes with me. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift that you've given us. Father, the principle of sowing and reaping, we open up our hearts to respond and take responsib responsibility for the places that we've been irresponsible. God, for where we have slacked off, where we have made excuses, where we have blamed a situation and a circumstance, and we sort of built a wall and said, you know what? Those people jacked me. They did that. This church, that person. Nope. That doesn't really go into account in this principle. You said we would reap what we sow. So this morning, Father, we own the seeds that we've sown, the areas that we have, have been irresponsible. Father, we offer them up. We offer them up to you, God. And this morning, we... we put our focus and our attention to making a change, to open up our hearts, to be able to, to get in sync, to get in rhythm with the reality of this principle. Father, we ask you to forgive us from being irresponsible, 
for looking at everybody else and comparing ourselves and playing that game. Lord, we're grateful for what you've given to us. Thank you. Thank you for the church that you've given to us. Thank you for the people and the friends that you've surrounded us with. God, thank you for the gifts that you've given to me, to us. Lord, we hold those up because they're seeds. And as we plant them, there is a harvest that you're passionate about, which is people, which is this city. Father, we make a vow today to be responsible to step out in faith, to use what you've given to us, to quit looking out the window and start looking in the mirror so that we can experience the best possible life that you've given to us. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen.